If you own an impact gun, you're going to want to watch this because this might save your butt one day. So months back, I did a video on weighted sockets. But not just weighted sockets, actually weighted socket adapter. Kind of a personal invention of mine. I wanted to come up with something unique, something that I could utilize on my existing sockets. So I bought a real weighted sockets. I have weighted sockets. Did a lot more research, a lot more tinkering around, a lot more playing around with them. They're a one trick pony. I'm going to show you how they work and why they don't work. So keep watching. We're going to build a custom one in this video and explain it all. So this is a standard impact socket that you would use for taking off lug nuts, anything else. This right here is what's called a weighted socket. This is Ingersoll Rand's uh, little baby, and it's pretty impressive looking. It has this nice little halo. Uh, you can buy it. They're the only ones that have this little halo around the outside. All other brands essentially just build up the wall, probably about that, about three times thicker around. And so the idea behind it is the extra weight helps you remove bolts, but not all, all bolts. They're kind of known as the, uh, like the Honda crank bolt socket you know they're they're designed primarily for people to remove crank bolts you can have the biggest and the best impact and with regular sockets you cannot take off a crank bolt you throw one of these things on and it takes it right off i'm going to explain why so in the last video i built this you know kind of emulate that but then so you could just use any socket on it you know kind of get the picture kind of looks the same but trying to remove lug nuts it actually makes it worse and a lot of people commented on it and a lot of it made sense is, you know, you got your hammer in here and it's trying to spin this. And the more mass you put on this, the harder it is to spin this. So you're just adding weight to the lug nut, making the lug nut bigger, heavier. And so the hammers in here are working harder and not actually able to break it free. And that's, I've done test after test off video. And that's exactly what I see is with this on it or even with this on it. Doing lug nuts, stuff like that, fasteners like that, it is way worse. It, it's so much more powerful with just a regular, you know, normal socket than it is with a weighted or my custom weighted adapter. And the reason why it only works on Honda crank bolts and other bolts, I'll get to that, is because this creates a anti-torsion effect. So I went through literally hundreds of reviews and couldn't figure out why these things get such a great reputation, why they work, when in all my tests, they, they're absolutely, they're horrible. Any bolt that I tried to take out, any lug nut, it's, it made it half as powerful, took away all the power. Why are some people claiming it's so much power, more powerful? And that's because the types of bolt they're using them on, and that's a bolt like this. Say, say if we were fastened down here, say this was something like a, um, well, this could be your Honda crank is every time you try to remove this bolt, every time the gun impacts, this actually acts as a torsion bar because it's held right back in here. So just like the crank, the entire, on the engine, the entire crankshaft wants to rotate. What this does is when the hammer impacts it, it keeps it from torsioning back. So then the hammer can grab it again and grab it again and grab it again before it actually has a chance to spring back. So I have been using this adapter over the last four or five months and I've actually found a couple situations where I couldn't have taken off the bolt without this. And they've been things like U-bolts on car, on trucks, you know, the back U-bolts. If you've ever tried to impact one of those off, they just sit there and spring. The whole thing is just too much of a torsion. It just sits there and boing, 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 boing. And same thing with the, um, uh, I did a tie rod end. I have a little clip right here. And it was just springing, boing, 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 boing. Couldn't get it off. Threw this little thing on there, zipped it right off. Uh, head bolts, any bolt that grabs, that has a distance where it's not grabbing and you're trying to loosen, you know, say this was the, the cylinder head. This is clamped down the cylinder head and this is in the block. You know, this distance isn't unreasonable. It just sits there and, and bounces. This just acts as a spring and never allows you to take it out. So it can't be a video without me building something, so I'm going to make another one of these things. But I'm actually going to use it out of this Ingersoll socket. I bought the cheapest one they had. Um, for some reason, the 26 millimeter was about 50 bucks. The other ones are like 70 bucks. So I'm going to use the cheapest one they have. I'm actually, if you watch the video on this, I had to add a, a male and a female on both sides of this. I'm actually going to cut this off down here. We already got the female. 
and then I will just add a metal piece on there. The Actually, the patent for this is amazing, and one of the reasons I bought it is because I thought it would resemble the patent. The guy that invented this, actually, this is, this is nothing. I mean, it's exactly what you see, but the patent actually shows the center actually located on springs, on four different springs, and the center being able to move, so it almost acted like a dead blow hammer or something. So every time it impacted, it acted like a dead blow. But, I mean, if this stupid thing is, you know, 50 to $70, if they did all the other work that I saw on the patent, this would be a $300 socket, which would be ridiculous. But I'm sure somewhere in somebody's, you know, wall of amazingness that I built, some guy has the, the one the prototype, which would be pretty impressive to use. But, unfortunately, we don't get that. Now you can see inside, nothing special about this at all. Funny thing is their photos actually show way nicer. They show these completely hold out, everything else. The socket's really not any thicker than a regular socket. Um, but now I just have to have the female part already. Just need the male part. I think I have one of those in the toolbox. Let's see. Um, right there. There we go. Just a little male part. I think that came off of, like, came off of one of these. I have about a 3 16 gap all the way around. So I'm just going to build up the inside with weld a little bit because that's not too big of a gap to jump. And then we'll just set it in there. It took me like three times around or so. And now I'll just set that on there. Make sure it's centered. Uh, put this on it so I can make sure it's straight. And then just weld a bead around the bottom. A lunch break? Hmm? What we got left? Oh crap. Piece of meat fell out of the burger. Can you wait? Let's uh, hold on. Let's get some of this out of there. That might be devoured. Oh no. Nope. Wait for it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Go ahead. Lettuce first. Interesting. Oh, there goes the meat. While she finishes that, we'll step over here. So I got it all welded up. So that's what it looks like. And now we're ready to, I guess, demo it. See if I can recreate what it works like in real life. Try to prove it to you guys that these actually do work in the right situation. Anything left? Hey. Hey. Hey, Ginger, leave it. Hey, how you like that? Delicious? Oh, we like it, huh? So I've been playing around with these, with the digital torque meter, and I get more torque um, with this on a long bolt like this, and I know this works, and... You know, the, the 3,000 positive reviews just even on the weighted sockets. And people say they work. I know they work. I have no doubt they work. I thought they didn't. They do. Um, but only for fasteners like this. So I'll just show you quickly how much torque is lost with the fastener through a torsion. So we'll just do that. So I'll take this. This is set on the lowest setting. I'm going to do it without those. But um, we'll just show you. If I hold this fastener right here versus down there, we'll tighten it. Okay, and now we'll loosen it. So this is a fastener, like a lug nut or something else like that, that's held up close. Uh, 58 foot pounds. So now we'll do the same thing, but I'll just kind of hold the nut just so it doesn't keep spinning down. And I can feel vibrations all the way through that. So we went from 58.4 to 30, almost half. So you have a fastener 
like this that's long that's a um the u-bolt on your truck it essentially zaps half your power out of your out of your thing so another way to look at it and answer some questions on the last video about this thing was you got to stop thinking about a screw as a circular thing it's just an inclined plane it's just a wedge and it's just wedging essentially making stuff you know say that the top of this is just making this tighter and that's all it is it's just an inclined plane pushing around in a circle that's it uh quite a few people suggested unequal weights and so that would be the exact same as like this hammer where i have unequal weights on each side and if i hammer down here it doesn't matter if both these things were the same size if this thing weighs the same the blow is going to be the exact same doesn't matter actually doesn't even matter if i whacked it pretty much like this it doesn't matter if i unequaled the weights if i just put all the weight on one side because this is a circle but it's going just in a straight line the exact same as this going into here and so what's happening is say i'm driving this in i know where they're loosening fasteners trying to loosen fasteners with this but say we're driving it in every time i impact this the entire thing is going to spring a little bit the object I'm, I, I'm trying to wedge this in here, it's actually just going to spring a little bit. And with every, you know, if I have really delayed impacts, you know, it's going to spring all the way back. And then I'm going to whack again. It's going to spring all the way back. Whack again. And that springing action is just eating up my energy. Now, if I can impact and then impact again before it has a chance to spring all the way back, that's when you make progress. And that's what this does, is this gives this so much more mass that this can't push it backwards as easily. Now, if this is super lightweight, yeah, it's just going to spring back twice as fast as if this is, you know, a 100-pound chunk of something. So the impacts, boom, 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 boom. That's all this is doing, just in a circle instead of a straight line. Now, there is a balance. Um, this has bigger hammers in here than this. Now, if I made this example here, this rod... 100 pounds whacking it with this isn't going to do very much work because this now I'm trying to move this mass and that's where you come into a problem with these is this light one that only weighs about 300 grams um, where this one weighs about 600 this one in my test seems to work way better on this smaller impact and this actually seems to work way worse where this one likes them both but actually likes this one better I can make more torque with this one than I can with this light one. So, um, there you go. Just kind of a fun little test. I'm just playing around in the shop. So the weighted sockets actually get kind of a bad name because people try them out and then they try them for other things besides what they're meant for and they get a bad name. People, they suck. They actually make it worse taking off things like lug nuts. And that's originally what I thought they were for. There's what you could use them for, but no. They are one trick pony. They are only for fasteners that have torsional forces in the fastener itself and then they work amazing and that's why they get so so many good reviews is because people use them for the applications they're meant for the way that they trick the dyno the way the dyno tests make these things seem so much better is because they're using a long fastener um you know i who knows how long it is in there smashing a hydraulic cylinder and that pressure is telling you how much torque they're putting on it. So they're just smash. You're, you're using a long fastener, which we don't use a ton in automotive. You know, you usually like your lug nuts are just, I mean, they're cinched up right there. I mean, this close, the fasteners on, you know, these torque machines are at least a couple inches long. Who knows? Do I think it was worth my time to build them? I do. Do I think it's better than an actual dedicated way to socket? Pretty dang close, actually. So happy I built them. They'll get used to my toolbox couple times a year. It was worth it to me. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully it was entertaining. Have a good one. Bye.